how does it feel to be in a big budget fantasy show that centers like Asian and indigenous cultures? It really is mind blowing because when I started off, it was, it felt like a desolate wasteland where you, you, you kind of felt like doomed to forever play a gang member or convenience store owner uh, or a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, right? Like characters that were just window dressing and not really characters, but more, you know, decorations, human decorations that sort of sprinkled the background to show diversity, but were never the ones that were the center of attention or the ones that drove the narrative or had their own stories, right? Um, so to be part of this and to see the world that's created and uh, to see the all, all the influences and the inspiration that's drawn from the different cultures and just sort of brought to the forefront is, it's heady stuff. We are living in a golden age. And I love it because it's a movement and not a trend. It's not continually, it's not happening because it's trendy and like, this is the flavor of the year. This is something that is going. And I think a show like Avatar will put another stamp in that, uh, in that history book and say, hey, let's let's open up more chapters and keep building on this. I wanted to know, yeah, what was it like working with all these young Asian actors, especially your relationship with Dallas Liu, like the relationship between Iroh and Zuko is so yeah. beautiful in the show. You can't fake that. You gotta have that bond. And with Dallas, it was so easy. I mean, I sound like a broken record because I've said it so many times, but it's absolutely true in my heart. I love Dallas so much. He's like another son to me. Um, he came in and he's all the things that you want a young uh, up and coming performer to be. He's grounded, he's kind, he's compassionate, he's, he's passionate, he's disciplined, he does the work, he's determined and he cares so much. And it's so easy to root for him and to be on his side and uh, it was just such a joy working with him and seeing him excel. The Last Airbender deals with very serious themes like war and sacrifice and and how loss can push you to do these terrible things. But even in this war started by adults, you know, the children are altering history. So why do you think these themes are important to explore today and especially for a younger audience? It's almost like a gateway to, to explore the themes or the, the events that are happening around them currently right now. It helps them to understand possibly the dynamic of, of the real world and what's going on. Uh, it gives them parallels and, and it's a great conversation starter too. It's like, oh, this is very similar to the Fire Nation wanting to take over and, uh, you know, and colonizing all these different uh, kingdoms and whatnot. And so it, that's, the, that's the sort of the gateway, I think, for younger audiences. Um, as well, it is a story about uh, you know, self-realization and development. I mean, one of the key things that Iroh says in the cartoon is you gotta ask yourself who you are and what do you want in life? And that's what all the characters are also going through. Every character suffered loss of some kind, but every character is on a journey of self-discovery to find out who do I want to be and who am I versus who do you think I should be and what do you think I should do? So what was it like getting to like put on your Iroh costume? That's a trip and a half itself because it was such a long process to sort of develop the look and you know, hats off the outstanding work from the hair and makeup department and the wardrobe department. The, the, the entire process took two hours every morning. It, they started off at six and they got it efficiently down to two hours and it was the application of the, uh, the prosthetics for the beards and the wig and the top knot and then the, the, the whole makeup. Uh, and then the costumes were just so, so detailed and so functional and, um, you know, it, very true as well, drawing a direct influence from the, the animated series, bringing it to life and actualization, but then going that next step and, and adding in all the finer details uh, that you, you couldn't get in the animated series. And you mentioned that you're a fan. Um, did you watch the show like before the Netflix adaptation? I watched it like 2017. Uh, a castmate of mine on Kim's Convenience, she said, you gotta watch this show. Um, you know, it, it's probably some of the best TV you've ever watched. So I, I sat and I watched all three books. I thought, this is fantastic. And then very shortly after that, uh, it was announced that they were being, um, it was being developed by Netflix into a live action remake. And I got fan casted uh, by, by thousands of people, which was like really, really great. To see a story like this on the scale, the epicness of it, and the sweeping adventures. And not only that, seeing Asian characters at the forefront who are driving the narrative and it is their story would have been a boon, I think, for the Asian community. It would have inspired a whole new generation of artists, 
I think there would have been a bigger surge earlier on because when you see your culture, your people, people who look like you as heroes instead of villains, it makes a world of difference, right?